All right, so you want to understand uh, what Trump's been saying recently yeah. about transgender issues in education. We're diving into this article. It's from the Christian Post. Trump pledges to expel trans ideology from schools, ban child mutilation nationwide. Wow. It was published just yesterday, October 24th, 2024. It's uh, making waves for sure. What really stood out to me is this connection Trump's making between his near-death experience and his political stance. What's the link? Let's find out. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting angle. Especially with the election coming up, the article outlines some pretty bold pledges from Trump. Yeah, he's not holding back at all, talking about a day one executive order to ban transgender ideology and critical race theory from public schools. Hmm. Yeah. Now, for anyone who might not be up to speed on this, critical race theory looks at how systemic racism is embedded in our laws and institutions. Yeah. And it's been kind of a controversial topic in education for a while now. Yeah. And it seems like Trump is tapping right into that controversy. He's also promising to sign a law. That would pan uh, child sex mutilation nationwide. That's the term he uses to refer to gender affirming surgeries for minors. Okay, and this is where things get a little uh. legally complex. Mm -hmm. You've got 22 states that have already passed bans. On these surgeries for minors, a nationwide ban would almost certainly face legal challenges based on things like the Equal Protection Clause, mm -hmm. which guarantees equal protection under the law. Right, so it's almost like he's trying to ride this wave of state-level legislation yeah. up to the national level. Exactly. And, you know, it's interesting how he positions himself within this changing landscape. The article quotes him as saying, these kinds of statements would have been considered crazy just 10 years ago. Wow, yeah, that's a pretty big statement. It really makes you think about how quickly things have changed. What do you think has caused this shift in oh, yeah. how we talk about transgender issues in the public sphere? Well, I think there's definitely a lot of factors at play here increased LGBTQ plus visibility, legal battles for equality, revolving social norms. I mean, they've all played a role. We're seeing a much broader conversation about gender identity than we did even a decade ago. And this conversation has become increasingly politicized. Yeah. And Trump is definitely taking advantage of that. The article mentions him accusing Vice President Kamala Harris of hostility towards Christianity, specifically well, calling out her stance on transgender athletes in women's sports. Uh-huh. That's a significant move. By framing this as a religious freedom issue, he's speaking directly to mm. a particular group of voters who feel very strongly about the connection between faith and politics. It's a way to energize his base and maybe even pull in some people who haven't made up their minds yet. So it's not just about transgender rights. It's about tapping into this sense of cultural anxiety and presenting himself as the one who will protect traditional values. Right, exactly. And the setting where he's making these pronouncements is very deliberate. He's at a rally in Concord, North Carolina with Eric Trump, evangelist Franklin Graham, and former Housing and Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson, all there with him. Hmm. What do you make of this audience, especially the presence of someone like Franklin Graham? Well, it sends a very powerful message. Graham's a prominent evangelical leader. He's got a lot of influence. Having him up there on stage next to Trump speaks volumes about who Trump is trying to reach with this message. Evangelical voters have always been a key part of his base, and this seems like a clear effort to solidify that connection. It's almost like he's trying to create this narrative of divine purpose yeah. around his policies, and it ties directly back to his recent near-death experience in Butler, Pennsylvania, back in July. Right. The article <laughs> details how he claimed this experience brought him and his family closer to God. Yeah, it's really interesting how he's weaving this personal experience into his political platform. Yeah. Do you think that resonates with his supporters, especially those who really prioritize religious values? Absolutely. Personal stories like this, especially ones that involve dramatic events, like a near-death experience that carry a lot of weight within certain faith communities. It gives a sense of authenticity mm. and reinforces the idea that his policies are divinely inspired. It's like he's saying, look, I almost died, and now I'm back with a mission. Exactly. And that mission, as he lays it out, is to protect traditional values, defend religious freedom, mm. and push back against what he sees as this radical agenda. Mm. Yeah. And he's not mincing words. The article quotes him warning that a Harris administration wouldn't leave Christians alone. And then he ties that directly to his promise to create a federal task force mm. to investigate anti-Christian bias. Wow, that's yeah. pretty strong rhetoric. It's like he's yeah. painting this picture 
of a future where Christians are under attack and he's the only one who can protect them. It is. It's that classic us versus them narrative. And it's super effective when it comes to mobilizing voters <laughs> who already feel like their values are under siege. By making himself the defender of Christianity, he's tapping into these deep anxieties and creating a sense of urgency around his campaign. Yeah, and it all comes back to these hot button issues like transgender rights and education. It almost makes you wonder if this focus is a way for him to avoid talking about other potentially tricky topics like the economy or foreign policy. That's a good point by sticking to these issues, which really resonate with his base. He can avoid going into areas where his record might be open to more criticism. It lets him control the narrative and keep the conversation focused on his strengths. So it's a strategic move, both politically and in terms of shaping the public discourse. Exactly. And it's important to remember that this isn't just about getting votes. It's also about shaping how we talk about these issues, even if he doesn't win the election. That's interesting. So it's like he's planting seeds that will keep growing no matter who's in charge. Exactly. By bringing these issues to the forefront, he's making sure they stay at the center of the political debate for years to come. He's shaping the landscape, regardless of the outcome. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about how Trump is framing these issues and the potential impact on his base. But how do you think his stance is being received by the general public, especially those who might not agree with him? Well, it's definitely causing a lot of division and controversy for some people. Yeah. His statements are discriminatory and harmful, yeah. especially to transgender individuals and their families. They see it as an attempt to reverse progress on LGBTQ plus rights and create an atmosphere of fear and intolerance. Right. And for others, it's confirmation of their own beliefs and concerns. Exactly. For those who agree with him, these pronouncements are seen as defending traditional values and pushing back against what they see as a radical progressive agenda. They see him as a strong leader who's willing to stand up for their beliefs even when he's criticized. Yeah, it's a stark reminder of how divided our political landscape has become. These issues touch on such deeply held beliefs and values. It's hard to find common ground when people are starting from such different places. Absolutely, and that's what makes this so challenging. We need to find a way to have these conversations respectfully. Even when we don't see eye to eye, it's about understanding different points of view and finding ways to bridge the divide. Do you think that's even possible in the current climate? It's definitely tough, but I think it's crucial. We can't just retreat into our own echo chambers mm. and ignore the concerns of people who think differently. Yeah, it sounds like a tall order, but one worth striving for. It is. And it starts by acknowledging that these are complicated issues. There are no easy answers. There's nuance and complexity. That often gets lost in the heat of the political debate. It's like everyone's speaking a different language, even when we're using the same words. Exactly. And that's why it's so important to listen, to try to understand where the other side is coming from, even if we don't agree with them. It's about finding that common ground, that shared humanity that can sometimes get lost in all the political back and forth. Right. It's not about compromising our values or beliefs. It's about recognizing mm -hmm. that we can oh. have different views and still find ways to coexist and even learn from each other. That's a powerful message. And I think it's especially relevant given how intense this particular topic is. It is. And it's something we should all aim for, no matter our political affiliations mm -hmm. or personal beliefs. Yeah, it feels like we're at this point where these issues of gender identity and religious freedom and parental rights, they're all kind of crashing into each other. It's a lot to process. It really is. It's this complex mix of social and cultural mm -hmm. and political forces. And it's playing out on a national stage with incredibly high stakes. If we kind of zoom out for a second and look at everything we've talked about, what are the key takeaways here? What does it all mean? Well, one thing's for sure. Trump is really going all in on appealing to conservative Christian voters by focusing on these hot button issues like transgender rights and religious freedom. He's tapping into these existing anxieties yeah. and making himself out to be the protector of traditional values. And he's doing it with really specific language and imagery, bringing in his faith and it's personal like, experiences. Exactly, he's creating this narrative that really resonates with his base and gets them fired up and ready to act. It's a powerful strategy. Yeah. And it can have a big impact on the election. So no matter what your personal stance is on these issues, it's obvious that they're shaping the political landscape yeah. in a significant way. Absolutely. And this deep dive into what Trump's been saying has really highlighted how complex and controversial these issues are. We've seen how they touch on 
deeply held beliefs and values, creating divisions mm. and sparking these heated debates. It's a conversation that's not going away. Nope, it's not. And it's one that we need to pay attention to and really think about carefully. We need to engage with these issues in a nuanced and respectful way, even when we don't agree. Because at the end of the day, how we handle these challenges will have a huge impact on our society. That's a powerful thought for our listeners to ponder. How might Trump's focus on these specific issues shape the broader political landscape and discourse no matter who wins the election? That's the question we all need to wrestle with. How will this focus on transgender issues and religious freedom keep evolving? How will it affect policy decisions and legal battles and social attitudes? These are questions that will be debated and argued about for years to come. It's a reminder that we all have a part to play in shaping this conversation. We can choose to engage thoughtfully, to listen to different perspectives, and to stand up for the values we believe in. And that's what I hope you'll take away from this deep dive. Well said. It's been a fascinating and thought-provoking discussion. And as always, we encourage you to keep exploring these complex topics, seeking out different viewpoints, and engaging in respectful dialogue. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into such a timely and important topic. Until next time.